set to jump center for Wofford against Desmond Ringer, and we're underway here in Macon, Georgia. Great to have you on board. A key game, of course, in the SOCON. You play a double round robin schedule, the first of two meetings this season for these two teams. Yeah, both teams primarily man to man, but you see from the tip here, Mercer jumps into a 2 3 matchup zone. As Collins on the right wing, he will get a lot of attention, as will that guy McGee, who is a really good shooter. There's a feed, Gordon, the senior forward. Midway down the lane, can't get it to go, and there is Jelks, the leading rebounder in the Southern Conference with just over nine a game. That's exactly where you want to get it, right in the middle of that zone around the free throw line. Gordon hesitated just a minute. I think that's what affected his shot. Leonard on the left wing. He's not known for his shooting, but he knocks down the three-pointer, and for Philip Leonard, he is now two out of seven on the year beyond the arc. Well, and just his seventh in his career, not known for that. He is a pass-first point guard. That is a really good sign for the Mercer Bears out of the jump. A Wofford team that, as we noted in the open, has not lost a Southern Conference game in a year. January 15th of 2015, eight in a row coming in. Their best run ever in the league if McGee couldn't get it to go. And Justin Lewis wanted to push the pace, but instead elects to slow it down. But I think that matchup zone has kind of confused Wofford just a bit in the sense I don't know that they were expecting that right from the start. I'm sure they covered it in the scouting report, but thought that the Bears would go to it later. Garcia knocked it away the first time, and then Gordon for Wofford runs it down, and here come the Terriers, a Wofford team that on the season forces just under 12 turnovers a game. And now on the miss, the Bears go to man-to-man. To man -to -man. And again, as we said, Collins and McGee are the shooters. You see McGee in the lower right corner of your screen, and Collins was on the other side of the baseline. Here's Eric Garcia, the junior point guard, has been part of a lot of winning in his career with the Terriers. Shot clock down to four, so Gordon going to go to work on Jelts. Little spin move, forcing it. They say he beat the shot clock, but the ball didn't hit the rim, so as it turns out, it will go back over to Mercer. He got that off just as the horn went off, the shot clock, but to your point, it didn't hit the rim. Violation the other way. Nice start defensively by Mercer. Mercer team that is tough to beat in this building. They have lost just nine games in here since 2011. There's Dimitri Rivers, the 6'8 guard working inside. And C.J. Newman pulls down the rebound. We have two of the top five in SoCon rebounding today. The leader, Jelks, for Mercer, and C.J. Newman of Wofford is fifth in the league. Alan, there's a couple others that are very capable in Ringer, as well as several for, for Wofford. Collins going to force the three, and that is something he has added to his game this year, Spencer Collins who last Saturday, you can say single-handedly, helped Wofford rally to beat Samford. And Collins hitting his first bucket of the ball game. He's 43% for the season beyond the arc, and as we told you, 61% so far coming in in five league games. An early 3-3 tie. Desmond Ringer working inside. They're going to get him for the walk. Nice job settling in right there by Wofford, in particular C.J. Newman on Ringer 101 in the post. And our general shale building blocks of the game. Well, Wofford's going to need some contributions off the bench. Even though they have a solid starting group, this is their second road game in less than 48 hours, especially that track meet they were in at Citadel. And for the Mercer Bears, they've got to win the battle of the boards. This is where they can dominate. They lead the SOCON. Ironically, Furman played them even 31 all on the glass Thursday night. Each team going to the bench. Jordan Strawberry, a guard is checked in for Mercer, and you see with the ball right there, Ryan Sawvell, one of their backup big men now on the floor for the Terriers, as McGee working against another player just checked in, Corey Kilby for Mercer. Collins out high, going to force a long two, and he gets it. Spencer Collins just two on the shot clock that time. He is all five of Wofford's early points. Well, as the veteran, very aware of where the shot clock was, but he was going to take that shot regardless. Nice start by Collins here early. Wofford, four out of six Southern Conference championships and some mighty close calls for upsets in the SoCon tourney as Dimitri Rivers hits the three-pointer. 36% on the year beyond the arc, and he puts Mercer back in front. Boy, nice awareness right there by Jordan Strawberry as C.J. Newman was stretched out on that pick and roll. Strawberry threw back to an open Rivers. Collins weaves. Garcia, baseline inside. Sawville gets rejected by the seven-foot-one Andrew Fischler of Mercer. 
Just his third block of the year. They don't use him all that much, but it looks like this is one of those games where Bob Hoffman is going to rely on that size inside. Well, the transfer from Gulf Coast Community College, redshirted last year, tried to put on a little weight. He did, still thin, but he can be a factor just at the defensive end based on size alone. Fischler left it short, rebound by Newman. Here's Collins, another tray, and he got that, and Spencer Collins is feeling it. As we said, he had his career high in this building a year ago with 26 points. Well, there's a reason he's second in the Southern Conference in league game scoring at 20.4. If you're Mercer, you've got to keep an eye on him at all times in the half court. Can't let him get going. He is off to a good start overall, averaging just under 15 points a game. That's Justin Lewis, a long two for him. Well, it's interesting. Both teams pride themselves on defense. Wofford not quite at the expectation of where they have been last several years, but got the feeling we could have a shootout tonight. We've got some pretty doggone good offensive players as well. You mentioned matchup zone earlier for Mercer. Are we still seeing the same thing? We are. Yep, on Mage, they're going 2-3. Misses, they're back in man-to-man. -man. And that time, the miss from the wing, but the Terriers will recycle the shot clock. Garcia will knock down a three-pointer. And Eric Garcia, 42% from long range. Wofford as a team, they rely on the three. They hit 37%. Before the game, and just then, I don't know if you noticed, Garcia looked over to his right to Justin Lewis. And before the game, we noticed those two kind of jawing at each other. Here's a feed inside Fischler, and he lays it up and in. And keep an eye on that matchup, number five for Mercer and number five for Wofford. Lewis and Garcia throughout the game as we have another... Uh, well, Pete, Pete you're right. 11-10 uh, ball game. Absolutely. You're right. There was more than just a little jaw. It went on several times for several minutes. And a whistle and a bump is going to be called. And they're going to get Justin Lewis with the first foul of the ball game. So a tight one so far. With, I was going to say we had another tie ball game, but we've had a couple of early lead changes. And back and forth we have gone. Spencer Collins coming in as one of the best scorers in the league, especially during conference play. The senior knocking that one down. Justin Lewis and company trying to answer and doing so for Mercer here in the early goal. Stay right up there in the top of the Southern Conference. Couple of teams that come in with one loss apiece so far in league play. Ella McGee's got to try to get in that gap. He's the best threat, although Spencer Collins has been really good. They placed him at the free throw line against this matchup zone. Garcia out high. Wofford's been going deep in the shot clock so far. Here's McGee, the freshman. Little hop step. Stops at the elbow. Can't get it to go. And there's Jelks taking the rebound away from Justin Gordon of the Terriers. Had a couple of lead changes so far. Wofford pretty much a man-to-man -man team. As Jelks is going to try a three. Gordon got out there just a little bit too late. Stephon Jelks can do it all. He leads the team, averaging 12 and a half a game, and he also hits nearly 40% of his three-pointers. Well, again, J Jordan Strawberry doing a really nice job stretching out that, that screen, and then he throws back. That time, Ringer dove to the basket. Jelks popped high. That's Gordon backing in on Ringer, the senior from Charlotte. Little baby hook with the left hand. He'll get it to go. And we're tied up again, this time at 13. Nifty little left move, uh, left hand move right there by Gordon. And we need to see more of that. He's a guy that can be active against this zone for Wofford. He's had nine points in each of his past two games against Chattanooga and the Citadel. There's Strawberry on the runner, and he banks it in. Keep an eye on him. He's really done a nice job scoring off the bench during league play. He, he certainly has. The last two, three weeks, his numbers are up across the boards. And he's like most players, when his offense is cooking, then his defense just goes up another level as well. And yes, if the name sounds familiar, he is the son of the former Major League outfielder. Is that time Garcia can't get it to go? And another rebound by Jelks. Who, with a little bit of an ankle issue coming in, not showing any effects of that. He has been skying for those boards. Garcia out to defend Strawberry. Jelks again on the wing, driving, pretty dish underneath. Ringer rejected by Justin Gordon for his fifth block of the year. And here come the Terriers. Well, a nice offense, but the defense was better. Wofford, though, trying, you can see, they're trying desperately to try to kick it in the lane so they can free a man on the wing for an open jumper. And Collins, the ones that he's made so far, really have been forced over top of the deep. You're exactly right. Now Mercer back in the man-to-man. -man. Collins out high to his right, fires, rattles off. He one of the few mistakes he's made so far in the rebound for Mercer, and here they come in a 15-13 game. Well, it's interesting. These teams are so well coached. The players 
they're well coached and they all everyone know their role even the guys off the bench understand what to do and how to do it strawberry is going to try a long one and the rebound deflected by mcgee and gordon has it of course, Mercer, one of the really good rebounding teams, not only in this league leading the way, but also in the nation. They've got an amazing difference between their rebounds and the opponent. No good that time, but Gordon runs down the McGee miss. And with a fresh shot clock, here's Garcia. Collins on the drive. Ooh, off the back iron. There's Ringer with the rebound for Mercer. I thought that was going down for Spencer Collins. Boy, and he thought so, too. He's kind of running down the court, shaking his head, like, how didn't that go in? Beautiful move. The closeout, after he did a couple of jump shots by the defense, was able to get by. Strawberry gets hung up. There's Jelts working on Gordon. A couple of great athletes. Feed inside. Ringer couldn't get the handle. And another turnover by Mercer. They come in minus three and among the worst in all the NCAA in turnover ratio. They, they really don't force that many, and they've been giving up probably more than Bob Hoffman, their head coach, would like. Well, I think both coaches would, would speak to that. You know, Wofford's been uncharacteristic the last couple games as well. McGee with a baseline drive, and the freshman, second leading scorer on the team with his first bucket of the afternoon, and a pretty move that time at 6-4 to go inside among the big guys. And McGee, yeah, I mean, he's as talented a freshman as there is in the Southern Conference, and if he can do that, that'll open up where his strength is, and that's outside the arc. So we're tied at 15, just under 10 to play. Jelks made one earlier from long range, can't get it to go, and it's out of bounds, and will stay in the Mercer end. And wholesale substitutions with an official timeout on the floor before all those guys check in. Bob Hoffman with a word or two for his reserve point guard, DJ Strawberry. Justin Gordon and the Terriers, Strawberry and the Bears. We've got a shootout so far here in Macon, Georgia. It's been a great year so far in the Southern Conference outside of the league. This Mercer team won at Arkansas. That was an overtime win. Stanford claims a victory on Big Ten turf. East Tennessee, Chattanooga, some huge wins. You don't see Chattanooga's win at Dayton, which might be just as impressive as any because that arena that Dayton has is so tough to play in. But now that we're into the early stages of league play, you're really seeing the quality of the non-league in these players. Uh, we've seen a few games you and I have so far, Dean. And I'll tell you what, the, the top six teams in the standings in the league, I think, are going to be there all year long, and Sanford could even jump into that. And it is going to be some kind of dogfight. As we noted before the break, wholesale substitutions. James Bento with the ball, getting it out to Ethan Stair. And the drive inside by the freshman in the bucket. And Mercer moves back in front. Boy, nice job by Stair right there. But I would concur that that, that win at Dayton is as good as any Power 5 win this league has had. And there's a reason you see all those wins that they're 17th in the RPI as a league. There's yeah, good coaches and good players right now in this league. Jumper off, just off, after a couple of bounces for Jalen Allen, and the rebound, Justin Lewis. Here comes Mercer. Terriers have pretty much their starting five getting a rest at that last official timeout. Neither team is led by more than three so far. Well, we talked about one of the building blocks was the bench, in particular for Wofford. Stare to James Bento. Bento driving, and Pegram got a hand on it for Wofford inside, trying to clean up Kant, and deflected out high and taken by Trevor Stump of the Terriers. Here comes Wofford. That is Brooks with the ball. Derek Brooks, their sophomore out of Hinesville, Georgia. So he's back in his home state. And Stump on the drive to Allen, and they'll work on the perimeter. Terriers do want to take it deep into the shot clock. No, they, they do. Now, Jalen Allen's the one guy that can beat Mercer off the bounce. So if the clock gets late, look for the ball to be in his hands. He's had a cold start to his season and going to get a second foul of our ball game called, both against Mercer and this one. They'll go against Philip Leonard, their starting point guard. So each of their starting guards, Leonard and Lewis, with the two fouls in our game. And that time, Lewis, their steals leader, was going for one. And they're going to get an over the back, I do believe, on Brooks. They're going to say Brooks with the push, and Lewis shaking up a little bit. Boy, Lewis did take a tumble, but, boy, I'm not so sure about that. That that was kind of a free ball right there, and Justin Lewis came into Derek Brooks' space, and that's exactly what Mike Young's talking about right now. It's a 50-50 call, and more times than not, an official's just going to let him play. No, you're exactly right. Official Jeremy Mosier was right there on the call, but... 
again, I'm not so sure Brooks didn't have just as much opportunity to go get that, and that was a free opportunity. Just bodies collided, and, and Lewis fell to the ground. It should have been a play on. Leonard and Mercer with a two-point lead, 8.09 to go, and quickly we get an illegal screen called on the other end. It's going to go against Andrew Fischler, and that might have been brought to us by Maybelline, if you will. <laughs> as, uh, in the Wofford end of the court where Mike Young had expressed his displeasure to the officiating crew. Sometimes there is a human element to this. Regardless, it's play on, and... It's been a well-officiated game, and, and neither team has really fouled much. Yep. You just commented on that. Yeah, just four combined, three of them on Mercer. Stump, who had a couple of uh, big moments for them in their win of the Citadel the other night. There's Allen missing on the rebound by Jelson. He may be 6'6", 225, but he is a athletic fella, and he really does take up a lot of space when he boxes out. Well, he's just one of those great rebounders that, is that he has a knack for it. Right place, right time, and he's got great hands to secure it. That time he tried to drive on Sawvell. And Ryan Sawvell, a transfer from Evansville, picking up his first. And we've got a timeout on the court with 7.28 to go here in the opening half. So we saw a flurry of points early on. Now it's kind of turned into a cat and mouse. Two great coaches, matching wits, matching X's and O's, and Mercer up by two. Macon, Georgia. It is standing room only in this 3,500-seat facility. A beautiful facility at that. And Mercer and Wofford and Tussle. Mike Young, currently seventh all-time in Southern Conference wins. He's just three away from jumping over Bobby Kremens and into fifth place. Eddie Cameron is also right there in front of Young. Of course, Bobby Kremens had a wonderful run at Appalachian State before he made a national name for himself at Georgia Tech. But Mike Young in his 14th year at Wofford. For many years before that, he was an assistant to the gentleman who's now the athletic director at Wofford, Richard Johnson. And he has done some kind of job for the past six years. Wofford has won the Southern Conference Championship and had near misses pretty much in each of their NCAA tourney games. At that time, Jordan Strawberry called for the travel. Well, Mike is a fantastic coach. I think that's well documented, but he's a better person and a better family man. Wife Margaret, two kids, just uh, have known him for many, many years. and. Nice to call him a friend. He and his entire family, as is so often uh, the case, if you look around Wofford's athletic department, just woven into the Wofford community and really great representatives. Collins had a big start, but that's his second straight miss for the Terriers' leading scorer. Rivers, the rebound, lost his balance, and out of bounds he goes. Well, nice job by Justin Gordon to hang around right there and take away the outlet to, to Leonard. You'll see it here on the replay. Rivers goes and skies for it over Newman, but then Jordan hangs around and takes away that outlet to Philip Leonard. Rivers had nowhere to go. That's one of those plays that won't necessarily show up in any stat book, but it steals a possession for Wofford. And in a game like this, that can mean the difference between winning and losing many times. Terriers are at their subs on the floor for an extended period of time. Now back with their starting five out there. Just about the same for Mercer. Gordon working on the seven foot one. Fischler inside, had it knocked away. Now left wing Garcia, 10 on the shot clock. Collins, he gets the attention of a couple of defenders. Gordon out high and he dragged his foot and that'll be a Wofford turnover. Wofford. Terriers combined their past two games, 36 against Chattanooga and the Citadel. I was just going to say they've had some trouble with, with turnovers coming into tonight. Now they only had one before that travel by Gordon. That's not where his strength is in you know, 19, 20 feet from the basket, but something to pay attention to right now. Wofford's got to take care of the basketball. We've seen so far the early battle. Gordon of Wofford, Jelks of Mercer, the two small forwards, two of the better athletes in the league. And that's really a treat to watch those two on both ends of the court defending or going against each other with the ball. Strawberry, seven on the shot clock. Thought about it. Instead finds Leonard cutting to the basket, and he lays it up and in. We talked about it. Both these teams so well coached. Leonard knew exactly what to do when he was overplayed, and that's go back door. Jordan Strawberry, nearly four assists per game. Leonard, their starting point guard, leads the way, and it's the biggest lead for either team at four points. Garcia's going to stop and pop, and that breaks a dry spell for Wofford. They hadn't had a field goal since above the 10-minute mark, but back to a two-point ball game in 1917. Now, if you're Wofford, you got to dig in defensively here the last five and a half minutes. They have a critical time for them right now. They're, they're, the bench kind of kept the music going. Starters back in. Now they got to make the run. 
This game is more the scoring pace of the 49-46 Wofford win in Spartanburg last year compared to 76-72 here. Pretty dish that time, and Fischler finishing inside. Now, Fischler, not really pretty, but but he's shown good hands on, on both baskets that he's made. He's been able to secure that, keep the ball high, not bring it down where the guards can slap it away. Garcia with Collins out high. Working behind the screen of Newman into the corner, it goes to McGee and Fletcher McGee knocking down the three-pointer. Freshman having a great year from really all over the place, but 39%. He's their second-best scorer. He is an absolute gym rat, and their PR person told me before the game while we were watching their shoot-around earlier this morning that, watch, he'll be shooting when everyone's getting ready to leave as they feed Fischler, but an offensive foul will be called. And it looks like they get Leonard on the charge, and I believe that's his second. Now you see right here, Leonard was able to turn the corner on Garcia, but a terrific job. Team defense right there. C.J. Newman outside the restricted arc, gives his body up. Bob Hoffman can't argue about that one, although that's Leonard's second, and that's going to send him to the bench. And he heads over there along with Jelks and Fischler, so substitutions, including Lewis getting back on the court. As we told you, watch the matchup of number five for Mercer Jelks defending number five of Wofford Garcia because they were jawing during pregame warm-ups and in the early stages of the ball game too and it's uh, kind of a little cat and mouse thing they got going. Garcia Jr., native of Aurora, Colorado, just outside of Denver. He's got it on the left wing. He's going to try a three and he got it. Eric Garcia hitting another three for this Wofford team. And just like that, the Terriers move back in front. It's our fourth lead change so far in the early going. Well, Garcia's had a couple of nifty offensive moves here the last few possessions. And a great freshman year. Build on it last year, even though he battled a broken jaw. Just as tough as they come. Ringer inside. 6'9 sophomore. The transfer from South Carolina finishing in front of the bucket. 23 all our score here late in the first half. I haven't seen him turn to the right shoulder. He's usually right hand dominant going over the left shoulder. So obviously show some expansion in that game as we enter conference play. Newman with the handoff to Garcia. Now McGee back to Newman. He hit a three there from moments ago. Garcia rather knocks down another three. Well, he had his feet set. Nice job by McGee. He could have forced what would have been a good shot. Instead gave it up to Garcia for a great shot. So Wofford matching its biggest lead of the ball game, a three-point advantage. Cut inside, Ringer fouled hard on his way to the basket, and that'll be the second on Sauvel, and it'll bring us to an official timeout. Well, obviously, when a big man like Desmond Ringer gets it down low, probably the best thing to do is to foul him. He's got one of the best shooting percentages in all of the Southern Conference. The under four timeout, Bob Hoffman chatting with one of our referees here today, the Wofford Terriers, Mercer Bears. It has been artistic at times and mighty physical at others. One shoot free throws as Desmond Ringer goes to the line for a couple. And the sophomore from just up the road in McDonough, Georgia, coming in at 75%, hits the first. Well, Ringer, b b before break there, was fouled, roll into the basket, and Mercer's done a really nice job. Wofford is hard hedging. They're not trapping the screens, but they're trying to stretch it out. Two or three dribbles. Jordan Strawberry, in particular, has found Rivers for a three, Jokes for a three, and then previously uh, Ringer roll into the basket. Pegram the rebound off miss. When we went to break, Wofford had 26. As we come back, they have 25, as you see, because they, during the break, changed that last three by Garcia to a two. He has the ball on the left wing. And Gordon, a dangerous pass, but the feed to Pegram, who does a nice job working through traffic and finishing. Matt Pegram, the freshman 6'11 from the Charleston area. And he's kind of a guy that they think has a real huge upside. They're not counting on too much out of him in terms of points or rebounds as a freshman, but he's getting extended minutes today against the big guys inside. You're right, and, and he's able to go against a bunch of other bigs at Wofford. That's only going to help him in practice. Wofford's ball, they try to build on this biggest lead of the game for them. They haven't led by any more than three points. And with 2.28 to go, Mike Young calling out of play. Wofford needs Pegram to give him some minutes, particularly with Cameron Jackson out with a foot injury. Collins, the runner, and the box out by Ringer who pulls down the rebound. You can see the focus on Mercer's defense. Whenever Collins has the ball, he has one defender going out, another's not too far behind, and a whistle. And we're going to get a foul. 
against the Terriers. It'll go against Pegram. That'll be his first. So now four fouls so far on Wofford. And Mercer was just four. So combined 18 fouls here. And we've got 2.03 to go before the half. So it gives you an idea that we've had a pretty good flow in this game so far. That's interesting. Mike Young obviously saw something right there, right before that foul. And he had that look on his face. You knew that the timeout was coming. He wants to talk this thing over. Uh, use it or lose a timeout. So Mike Young will use his. So he has three remaining. Bob Hawkins doing just a great job here at Mercer. And keep in mind, they were in the Atlantic Sun Conference for the better part of his eight years here. Now, he's in season number eight, second season in the Southern Conference. But you remember, their last year in the Atlantic Sun, they won the league and went on it. Did some great uh, things in the uh, NCAA tournament. Now, Bob Hoffman, again, like Mike Young, as fine a gentleman as he is coach, he's a good mentor. He's the perfect fit for this Mercer University basketball program and just done great things. And, you know, we, we saw it there in the graphic. They have won a tournament game each of the last four years, whether it's been CIT, CBI, NIT, or the NC2A. There's Strawberry off the inbound, and a play designed for him couldn't get it to go. Gordon, the rebound. It was 2013 they got the win against Duke, but still they've uh, achieved, as you say, a win in a different postseason tournament each year. No other team in the nation can say that. Maybe no one in the nation is hotter from beyond the arc than Spencer Collins came into the ball game at 61% on threes in five SOCON games, and it's another tray. And that puts Wofford up by six, their biggest lead so far. Well, when you're on the road, you, there, you need to do a lot of things, but your veterans have to show up, and so far, Collins and Garcia have done it at the offensive end for Wofford. That'll be a held ball as Stair moves to the basket, and the arrow pointing Mercer's way, so Collins off to a good start. He's been scoring in bunches, especially in SoCon play. Now it's 11 points in the game, three out of five from beyond the arc. He's always been kind of that silent assassin, that third, second or third option when you had Carl Cochran last year and Lee Skinner and others, but he's been asked to carry a much broader role, and he's starting to take it upon himself here in conference play. Strawberry no, Jelks on the return. That won't go. There's Ringer inside, and Desmond Ringer using that size to box out C.J. Newman and put it up and in. It's a four-point game. Uh, one of the first offensive putbacks, kind of second-chance opportunity that Mercer has gotten here in the first half. Coming up on one minute to go in this first half. Tight ball game between two of the contenders in the Southern Conference and the two-time reigning champ, Wofford Terriers, holding their own on the road. Although Newman missing that one. Jelks another rebound. And now will Mercer try to go two for one? College teams don't do that quite as much as the NBA does. Oh, knocked away that time from Ringer. Newman comes away with it. And now the question for the Wofford Terriers with about a 10-second differential, what do they do? They'll probably try to continue their desire of using a lot of shot clock. Well, you're right. And Garcia, heady point guard play right there, trying to figure out what defense they were in. They're going to look for Collins. He has the ball right now. And Lewis to defend. Gordon out high. Five on the shot clock. Gordon going to step out for a three. That won't go. So 10 seconds to go. And Mercer. And I blame Wofford teammates for that. They hung Justin Gordon out to dry right there. No one came back to get it. Jelks forcing to beat the buzzer. That won't go. And the Wofford Terriers will see that four-point lead stand up heading into halftime. Well, each team a little bit of a chess match. But to your point, he has affected the game by at the, at the, on the glass as well as with a couple of really nice assists. These are two really fine players. Now, Spencer Collins wearing number 12 this year. The third different number the senior out of Easley, South Carolina has worn during his Wofford career. He's about to inbound at mid-court to start things in the second half. But this year, he switched from his number 14 last year, his high school number, to 12 this year for a very special reason. Well, he, he did it in, in memory of Jeremiah Tate, former Wofford teammate who tragically died this past summer drowning. And... Uh, you know, he said it was the right thing to do. In fact, he spoke at Jeremiah Tate's funeral, and Mike Young said uh, he'd never been prouder of Spencer Collins in any basketball or academic move. And C.J. Newman getting the role in the first shot of the second half. So Newman, the senior from the Minneapolis-St. Paul area, comes off a career-high matching 12 points at the Citadel, and he gets in the scoring column right there. 
And Wofford matching its biggest lead. Jelks hit a first half three, can't get that one to go, and there's Collins on the rebound. I'm not so sure that Bob Hoffman, if the game progresses, necessarily wants Jelks, who can go outside and in necessarily shooting that shot. I think they'd rather maybe work Jelks as part of that roll in down low. We'll see as we unfold in the second half. Here's Gordon working on the 6-9 ringer. Reverses and makes it from the left side. I think you're exactly right, Pete. Conversely, I, Mike Young obviously made a big emphasis at halftime of throwing the ball inside. First two possessions go to Newman, and now the power forward Gordon attacks. 4-0 run to start the second half. Biggest lead of the game for either team. Eight, ringer inside, and he with a reverse layup from left to right. Might have gotten away with a half step right there, but... Interesting no to see it. now if Mercer kind of falls back into a zone that was pretty effective for him early in the, in the first half. And you would think Wofford, a team that can go four out and likes to take jumpers, wouldn't necessarily mind seeing a zone. Go ahead and pack it in on them. They just as soon have the space out high. Gordon tried to feed inside a little bit too late to Newman. And here comes Leonard going all the way on Garcia. He'll go to the line and shoot two. And for Eric Garcia... His first foul in the ball game. We didn't have too many fouls on either side in the opening half. Boy, and look in the replay. Look who's following. Nice move. Nice crossover by Leonard. And I, in, incoming in the screen, number 15. He's <laughs> always around the basketball. I mean, even after the whistle had blown, he was still attacking to try to go get it just in case. Jelks and Lewis have really stepped into key roles this year for Bob Hoffman and this Mercer team. They're hoping that Dimitri Rivers, their 6 8 guard, can also do the same as the year progresses as we see the first free throw go down for Leonard, who comes in shooting 66%. You're right. I mean, Rivers is kind of that X factor. Didn't play much as a freshman, now coming into his own a little bit as a sophomore, but he needs to kind of be that next player within this program. And they've lost some really good ones the last couple of years. Langston Hall two years ago was kind of the star on that NCA team. And then last year, TJ Hollis, big guy inside. And now Jelks has kind of taken his position. Wofford that five-point lead led by eight moments ago. One of this building, 76-72. Last year, they had a big lead in the game. And then Mercer came all the way back. And was back and forth down the stretch, and the Terriers prevailed. Collins had a big say in that outcome, trying to do the same today. Had a good first half, can't get that jumper to fall. Here comes Mercer. And you get the feeling the crowd here is just waiting for something good to happen to, to kind of explode, if you will. McGee with the rebound off the Leonard miss. Terriers again not looking to push the pace. They do not want to get into a track meet here. None whatsoever. Not their style. They're capable of getting up and down. And off the leg of McGee, he made a baseline drive earlier in the game for two and that time he was trying to do the same but pretty good defense that time as well no you're right he just dribbled it off he was trying to turn the corner Leonard doing a nice job defensively driving McGee right to the baseline Lewis sets up behind a screen halfway down comes out and look who hustles and runs down the rebound in the corner Stefan Jelt ringer the big fell off the glass well, and then Jelks comes up with that loose ball slash rebound and gets the hockey assist, if you will. <laughs> Outlets it to Leonard, who finds Ringer inside. Ringer off to a nice start here in the second half. What do we see defensively? It almost looks like a 1-3-1 out of Mercer. No, you're exactly right. With Lewis up top, they're just kind of daring Gordon or C.J. Newman to catch that ball at the free throw line and beat him. McGee off the fine from Collins. Can't get the roll. And Rivers the rebound. Bears as close as they've been in a while. Jelks. Now Lewis. And Garcia, the little guy, took it away from Rivers. Eric Garcia, scrappy player. As we told you earlier from the Denver, Colorado area. Collins thought about it the first time. Second time can't go. And a little tap out rebound by both Sawbell and Newman. And it recycles the shot clock. Well, that's really, really well coached right there. Wofford does work on that. They say if you can't secure the rebound, tap it back to a teammate. It's exactly what Newman and Sawbell did right there. McGee splits defenders, almost lost the handle. And a drive inside. It won't go down for Sawbell, but he'll go to the line. I like what he brings to this team, the transfer from Evansville. You know, he's stronger than he looks. He's got really good bounce in there. He's a guy that can play. I mean, he's a power forward, but he can guard a, a small forward. He can guard a center. More than anything else, he's got great IQ. Shooting two. And now heading the line on the season, shooting 69% as there's a little bit of moisture on the floor. 
And we don't see him in the shot right now. Before the game, you pointed out that Ryan Sawell's dad had found his seat behind the Wofford bench. And right behind where Mike Young is right now, in fact. And Sawell, originally from Mundelin, Illinois, played at Evansville, transferred into Wofford as he misses the first free throw. But the dad makes the trip down from the Midwest for every game, no matter where Wofford's playing. No, you're exactly right. Speaking with Mike Young and associate head coach Dustin Carnes before the game, they said, the perfect parent as well. I mean, he's at every game, doesn't say anything to the staff other than good luck, win or lose, or whether Ryan plays or not, he's cheering as loud as anybody. 0 for 2 that time for Sawell, so Mercer getting it back down by 3. Well, as we, as we were talking right there, almost a hockey shift of players coming in and out of the game, particularly for Walter. Drive on the baseline that time, Leonard hit the deck, and a foul was called. And I believe they are going to get a push inside. Let's see. I think they're going to say it was on the big man, Pegram. Oh, well, got an official timeout on the court. Wofford led in the lead earlier in the half, and they've got the ball. Uh, you're, you're right on both accounts. Mercer really, really good here in Hawkins. Crowd helps. Good players help. Feed inside the seven-footer. Fischler puts it in, and Pegram just picked up another foul. That'll be his third. Now, Fischler's given them some good minutes. You'll see it here on the replay on the out-of-bounds. He gets the screen, keeps his hands high, releases it before Pegram can even attempt to block that shot. So Newman will come back in, and the freshman Pegram, who had an uncle play in the Wofford program many years ago, is one of their top ten scorers all time, Willie Pegram. But at Pegram to the bench, two quick fouls, one just before that break, and then another coming out. And here is Andrew Fischler. Transfer from Gulf Coast Community College, a 7-foot, 1, 218-pound junior, originally from the Atlanta area, just outside in Cumming, Georgia, 6 out of 12 from the line this season. And that'll tie us up at 34 apiece. So a run for Mercer to get this thing even, an 8-0 run. Wofford led by 4 at the break. Zach exactly. Brooks now running the point for Wofford. No, you're right. He's exactly what Bob Hoffman wanted out of that timeout treating out of bounds like like football treats special teams now a bunch of bench players on the on the floor for both teams who can keep the music going Gordon off the feed from Newman shot clock at five so Gordon goes to work strong move to the basket Mike Young wanted the foul nothing doing and it comes down to Ethan Stair of Mercer and Mike Young is going to be admonished by the official a coach's warning Jeremy Mosher, Jason Creek, and Frankie Bordeaux are officiating crew today. Uh, it's interesting. A lot of times the officials won't stop play with a warning. I think Mike Young maybe caught a break right there, but but his point was earlier in the first in the game in the first half when there was that loose ball between Brooks and Lewis, a lot of contact call went against him. A lot of contact there. Gordon initiated. Nothing called on Fischler. Not a lot of fouls in this game. In fact, Wofford's only shot two free throws. Mercer has shot just five. Strawberry crossing over on Brooks with a lob and in. And an offensive foul. So let's see. A new rule this year. And they will wave off the bucket. Well, Take that, another look. That looked like the right call. You see the defender, Gordon, steps. His feet are set. He's outside that arc. But in the old days, I think that would have counted as a basket. That's exactly right. The new rule this year, and you see that Frankie Bordeaux is still hearing it from Mike Young on the previous, in his opinion, no call on the other end of the floor. So 34 all, our score remains. 14.45 to go, and what looks like a ball game is going to go right down to the wire. A couple of teams, they have slightly different styles, although you notice something stat-wise. Neither team has had a bucket running out so far. Allen on the right wing. He's a guy they hope can get hot in the league play. He's had a cold start to his season. Out of bounds, he goes back over to Murphy. But no fast break points so far. No, and that's, you know, with Wofford, they get back defensively. Mercer's been very good. I'll tell you what now, effort plays are going to win the game down the stretch here. You sense that this crowd wants to get into it. It's a time where the, where the officials are going to start taking control, but more importantly, the players are going to have to adjust. And losing the handle on the way to the basket for he killed him. But it was last touched by a Terrier. Hamilton Collins, Garcia, McGee, and also Sawell come back quickly. And the wholesale substitution. 
And, and for the Wofford bench right there, for those four guys, that was minus three. They gave up that three-point opportunity to Fischler. But you knew that the bench was going to have to play for Wofford today. Second game in less than 48 hours, and playing Citadel just can wear you out with that style of play. Pretty feed. Strawberry Rivers has a bounce out on him. Oh, that was a nice feed and almost a reverse layup. Newman, the only one who stays on the floor after the mass subs for Wofford. Collins out high, and that'll go for another tray. And Spencer Collins having a fine afternoon for this Wofford team. As he hits the three-pointer, he now has four threes in the ball game. He's all scores with 14 points so far. So Wofford back in front by three. They led by as many as eight in the early stages of our second half. And a whistle away from the ball. We've got a three-second violation against Fischler. Well, you mentioned one of our building blocks of the game that the benches have got to come through. And again, this Wofford team has lost a couple of great players that were so much a part of those past two SOCON titles, Carl Cochran and League Skinner. Cochran, the league player of the year last season. And whereas some folks who had reserve roles for Wofford knew they were going to need to step up in the starting lineup and have, what were you going to get out of the bench production-wise? And so far, it's been pretty good for the Terriers, despite the fact that overall they come in at 7 and 10. They've been a much different team in league play. No, they, they, they certainly have. And you knew that guys like Collins and Garcia in particular had the ability to step up once you got through what was a brutal non-conference schedule for them. It was like Mercer's changed up their zone, and that time Strawberry called for the reach-in foul. Well, you know, ever since Mike Young made that comment to the official here in the last minute or so of of game time the officials have kind of tightened things up and for strawberry that is a second personal foul and so leonard the starting guard and strawberry who also is a point guard each with two fouls apiece press 30 for the terriers as jelks gets a hand on that one knocks it out of bounds I saw Mike Young go up to Stefan Jelks and give him a big hug during uh, the pregame warm-ups. And again, as the recruiting process goes on, it's amazing how many guys in this league are recruited by so many other teams, and you, and you build relationships with the coaches, and sometimes it'll come down to, you know, one or two SOCOM teams that you might make a decision over. And, and these two did. You know, kid from up in Atlanta, Deshaun Lowry, came down to Mercer and Wofford. He decides to sign with Wofford. There's going to be those recruiting battles for the top kids in the Southeast that, that aren't necessarily ACC or SEC players. McGee with that miss, and Leonard looked like he was going to penetrate, but he'll back out. And, and I'll tell you something, as you see the SOCON, and you'll get every ACC and SEC coach to agree on a point I'll make in a moment, as Lewis can't get the runner. And we go the other way. Wofford looking to push the pace, but now Garcia going to back it out. Left corner, Collins feeling it, but not that time. Newman in a battle for the rebound, and Stare for Mercer saves it to Renner. And Mercer will set it up. You've got several players in this league that could easily play on an ACC roster. They may not be starters, but they could contribute in the ACC, SEC, and other major conferences. I don't think there's any question about that. And yeah. Stare that time, no Newman the rebound. Well, Ringer started there at South Carolina. Gordon on his way to the hole. Can't get a shot off, but he's fouled from behind. So we'll see Justin Gordon go to the line. It'll just be the second time a Terrier shoots free throws here in the ball game this afternoon. Stefan Jelks called for the personal foul. A Wofford team that you know, is in a battle, to say the least. Mercer and Wofford going toe-to-toe -to -toe on a Saturday in the SoCon. We wouldn't want it any other fold. Well, ne neither lighten it up. Both just 30% here in the first eight minutes of the second half. A lot of that has to do with the defense. And Wofford now over three as a team from the foul line. Either team has had a whole lot of free throws. And Gordon gets the roll, so one out of two on that trip. And the Terriers' lead is built back out to four, 38-34. They led by eight points in the early minutes of half number two after they had a four-point halftime lead. Philip Leonard out high, looking for Desmond Ringer, and Ringer going to finish. They started to do a lot of that late in the first half. They certainly did, and it was Strawberry to the Mercer Biggs. This time it was Leonard inside. Nice job. Young kids, you, you understand what Leonard did. He kept his dribble alive. He kept his head up and waited for the play to kind of just develop. Wofford on the perimeter, but they've had success out there today, and that's usually where they do a lot of their scoring. There's McGee up top, Garcia. And Lewis right on the shoes, hops down to nine on the shot clock. 
feed to Gordon. Collins thought about it the first time once again, and he gets it feeding away. And another three-pointer for Spencer Collins and the senior out easily South Carolina now five out of nine beyond the arc. Well, that's what your player, your big players need to do in big games and show up and make shots like that. Credit Justin Gordon right there. He caught it at the free throw line and then went inside out. Five-point lead bumping inside. I think they're going to get Gordon on the hold on ringer. You know, earlier, and that's some nice in-game coaching by Mike Young and staff also. Justin Gordon in the first half was catching that ball at the free throw line against the zone and, and hesitated, put it down. He traveled one time. Right now, it's about catch it and look inside out to your shooters. First foul on Gordon, fourth in the team. Garcia went for the strip instead. He'll be whistled for reaching in, and for Eric Garcia, that's his second person. You'll see him just reach down, probably saved a layup right there by Ringer. And even though it's the second on the starting court guard, I bet you Mike Young is just as soon in that situation. Take that and we get a travel off the inbound. It happened right in front of Bob Hoffman. You see him there on the left side of your screen, the head coach from Mercer. He can't believe it. One of the more animated coaches in the league. I was talking with a fella today who was watching the Auburn Mercer game and said, boy, throughout the game, they couldn't take the cameras off Bob Hoffman <laughs> and how he was reacting in a game that Mercer probably should have won on an SEC court. They got one their next game at Arkansas. Did they get a victory? Collins inside, right up over the 6'9 ringer, and you can see the angst on the face of the big fella. Well, and, and that time, Justin Gordon dove to the basket, and then Spencer Collins filled behind him. Lewis going to try a three, and he got it from the corner. That's big for Mercer. And a little bit of a Wofford run as they were starting to get that confidence back. It's a four-point game once again. You're exactly right. That was a very timely make by Justin, Justin Lewis. He's a guy that can make plays for you both outside the arc and get into the basket. He gets the lid off from beyond the arc this afternoon. Now under 10 minutes to go. Here's Garcia, and the shot does not count as they're going to say the foul is on the floor. And that's pretty big right there. It's the third on the starting point guard, Leonard. And they'll get him on the reach-in. Boy, he was just a hair from going into that shooting motion. Nice Tonight's team with five team fouls here in the second half, but it is big. Leonard will go over to the bench. And Ringer also going to get a breather, but Leonard there because he has three fouls. And I got to think of this kind of ball game, Bob Hoffman probably wouldn't want Leonard off the floor at all if he could afford it. We'll see how long he can keep him over there. No, you're right. Although Jordan Strawberry has been playing well for the Bears, not only today, but the last couple of weeks. He's got some confidence. Now it's time for him to step up. Strawberry at his career high, 24 points against a good team, Chattanooga on the road. A couple of weeks ago in that time, he knocks it away to Lewis. Two on one break, Lewis by himself, and Gordon knocked it off the glass. No whistle, battle underneath, and let's see. Boy, I really thought they would get a goal 10 there. I think even the Wofford players were a bit surprised. And let's see, are they going to call it over the back foul on the rebound try? Oh, great job. Collins knew he messed up. Look at him. He, he doesn't backpedal. He runs forward, gives himself a chance to go at it. And Gordon got it before it hit the rim. Lo and behold, Four there's had a movement toward the rim in that situation. That's right. the glass. You know, folks think goaltending is whenever the ball is deflected around the glass, but it does have to be, it has to make a physical motion toward the basket. And in that case, the officials saw otherwise. And then I believe they're simply going to say in the scrum afterward, the ball was knocked out of bounds by Mercer, but you see the officials going to the scorer table. And... Mike Young, the head coach of the Terriers, and Bob Hoffman, each a little bit confused. Are they going to go ahead and count the basket? Okay, after the fact, now they have counted the basket. And, okay, so they, well, we never heard a whistle, wow. though. Yeah, no, we never heard a whistle. Know it was so loud in here. Frankie Boudreau was the official on the baseline that yep. made the call. Yeah. And normally you'll see a very animated reaction, though, showing the official stop play the basket. We didn't see that either. Boy, so it does down. go as a bucket. And Bob Hoffman either wanting a foul or wanting goal tape. So 43-41, that's a big play right there. Carriers had built a lead back out to seven points. Gordon setting up on Jelks, backs in, bodies fly. Blocking foul is the call against Jelks. Let's see if they count the basket. Nope, they're going to wave it off. And Stefan Jelks picks up his second. I'm not so sure if maybe he was applying any drama classes he may have taken in his career here at Mercer, but uh, the official... 
It's one of those bam, bam, it can yep. go either way. And a uh, collision right there and a whistle and a foul. And you can see the contact. And they're going to get Justin Lewis for running into Garcia. So that'll be 17 fouls now against Mercer and a very good Wofford team that shoots 76% from the free throw line will be in the one and one. Well, that's amazing. That's almost like the play we saw in the first half. Watch it here again. Ball is thrown about 30 feet outside. Lewis and Garcia go into the air. Lewis gets called for the bump. And they got the defensive player on that first half call that's you referred to. In that case, it was Brooks coming over the back of the offensive player. Well, in this situation, the defender ran into the man waiting for the ball. Eric Garcia to the line for the first time this afternoon. The Aurora, Colorado native, 77%. He was being recruited by Wofford, but as I'm told, he was kind of eh, just thinking about the school in the South. But when they went out and played BYU in the NCAA tourney in Denver, that's when he really fell in love with the program back in 2011. Well, and you know who actually is responsible is Nico Medved. He, the, the head coach at Furman, he was uh, at Colorado State as an assistant. And, and because of his relationship with Mike Young when he was at Furman as an assistant, he said, hey, there's a guy, if I was in the Southern Conference, I would recruit. Lo and behold, the kid went Wofford, and Nico ends up back at Furman as the head coach. Now he's got to play against him. And he shows you a skill, having a good day, scoring that time two out of two from the free throw line. A couple of big free throws. They're all going to be big here down the stretch. 12 points in the game for him. Collins of Wofford leads everybody with 19. Elks for Mercer, now Lewis out high. Double team comes, so it leaves Lewis open for a three. And the rebound by Gordon. He hit his first attempt of the day, but he's been cold from long range since. Uh, you said it earlier when he took his last one. That's not his strength. Is he, is he capable? Absolutely. But you want to put him right there on the block, show the numbers, and go to work. And knocked away that time nicely by Jelks. Comes to Lewis, and Gordon will be called for the foul. His second. And that time, the fact that Jelks had such an open three, that's by design from a defensive standpoint for Mike Young. That's clearly part of the scouting report. Hey, look, he's capable of making it. That's what they talked about, but back off. Let him prove it right here. Yeah, Gordon just gets caught right there, reaching. That ball was already in Justin Lewin's hands. He's trying to make his case to official, but well after the fact. 16 fouls on Wofford, so Mercer will be in the bonus at the next foul. And Mercer, a team from the foul line this year, pretty good themselves, 73%, so it could come down to that. Lewis from the right wing, and he got another two straight threes for Justin Lewis, the senior native of Richmond, Virginia. And it's a 45-44 game. Back to a one-point Wofford lead. Uh, he's the one guy outside that you don't want to lose. Fletcher McGee lost him just enough. Gordon hung up. And now Brooks, backup point guard, as Garcia's getting a breather. And that time, Collins going to be called for lowering his shoulder. 17 foul against Wofford. It, will be the first against Spencer Collins. And will not lead to free throws. So each team has the other in the one and one bonus. So coming up on the under eight timeout and Bob Hoffman thinking, you know, we could have a lead. And when he was down by eight points earlier in the half and then seven points a moment ago, he would have taken that right then and there. Strawberry ringer. That's worked all day. And that time Desmond giving us our fifth lead change of the ball game, our first of the second half, and Mercer moves in front by a point. Well, Wofford's going to have to figure out in the last 7.45 of how they're going to guard those screens. Mercer's carved them up multiple times for layups. And a 6'9 guy, Ringer, who if you get it to him, by the time he's got the ball, it's too late for Wofford. Exactly right. Collins out front, and another one goes. <laughs> it's like Jordan and Cleveland against Elo. <laughs> As Spencer Collins is now 6 out of 10 beyond the arc, a 22-point game in a building where he had his career high 26 a year ago. Well, and he is showing as much emotion as, as he ever will. He knows what's at stake here in the early going of league play. Out front, Lewis. He's feeling it. And Justin Lewis has made three consecutive three-pointers. That's exactly the kind of game you thought we might have dealing with two of the best programs in the league. Little pressure that time by Strawberry. Now he's doubled over. He is hurt in the backcourt. Play will continue. Five on four. Let's see if the Terriers recognize it. Gordon, right side, McGee drives, goes to the bucket, and contact, and a blocking foul will be called. And they're going to get Rivers. 
for the foul. Meanwhile, with Jordan Strawberry, we're going to find out what his situation is. I'm looking in the air at the athletic trainer, and actually Strawberry staying at midcourt. Bob Hoffman not liking what he saw just there. Dimitri Rivers picking up the personal foul, his first in the ball game. Things are heating up here in Hawkins Arena. We've got quite a stretch run ahead, or so it seems. 49-48, the homestanding Mercer Bears. Back in front. Justin Gordon set the screen at the free throw line. A little bit of traffic for his point guard, Eric Garcia, and Strawberry just ran right into it, not knowing what was coming. He, it'll be interesting to see if he can come back. And you just saw headline news on that first free throw. Fletcher McGee, the freshman for Wofford, stepped to the line at 34 out of 35, 97% of the season. He's only a few attempts per game away from leading the nation in free throws, but goes one out of two that time. Tie game at 49. Last year in here, Wofford won 76-72. They won 49-46 up in Spartanburg to sweep the regular season series. Jumps feeding Ringer, and there he is again. He has been cleaning up inside as Desmond Ringer, having himself a fine afternoon, and he now leads Mercer in scoring with 15 points. And C.J. Newman, I thought he took a charge as Jelks left his feet on the ground. Officials say play on. Wofford in that pace that they prefer. Mercer back in the zone, I think, a little bit to protect Leonard. Collins downtown. <laughs> Do not touch him. You will get singed. 52-51. Yet another lead change, our eighth of the ball game. Boy, you think Spencer Collins likes Hawkins Arena? Actually, you know, before the game, I said, you had 26 in here last year, and he said, I like this arena. <laughs> so there's your answer right there. They try to go inside big again. Jelks that time as it knocked away by Newman. Tries again. Rebound deflected out high, taken by Garcia. So the Terriers had one-point lead. And if you're Eric Garcia or any Wofford Terrier, you, you better try to find Spencer Collins right here. Spencer Collins pushing that career high from last year. 26 in here a year ago. He is 25 this afternoon from three-point range. He's seven out of 11. Came in at 61% in SOCON play. Almost lost at that time with five in the shot clock to Garcia. Garcia will force a three and the rebound by Jelks. Nice defensive stand that time by Mercer. Yeah, it certainly was. Justin Lewis, as much as he's been scoring, kind of taking the challenge now defensively to guard Collins. Wofford's Mike Young, I think, won the timeout. Jelks will try another three-point attempt. Can't get the home roll. And the battle for the rebound to Lewis. And he knocks down the home. Collins and Lewis. Back and forth from beyond the arc. And back in front goes Mercer, 54-52. And if you can notice, you see the whiteboards on the Wofford bench right here. Assistant coach Kevin Giltner writes down the play, and they talked about it in the shoot-around today. You're not going to be able to hear when this crowd gets loud. Ooh, nice feed inside. Slavell can't finish. Tips it out to Garcia. And we're tied at 54, and it quiets the crowd. Slavell won't be credited with a rebound, but again, that tip back that they teach each and every day at Wofford. And we're tied at 49, now tied at 54, and Bob Hoffman going ahead and using his first timeout of the ball game and the first one called by either team here in the second half. We've got ourselves a barn burner here in Hawkins Arena. A sold-out standing room only crowd showing up to witness it, and they are being treated to quite a battle. A couple of teams that think they can win the crown of the SOCON this year. Spencer Collins is certainly winning scoring honors so far, but Justin Lewis not too far behind their shootout, and the Bears and Terriers shootout continues after this. Southern Conference Basketball on Fox Sports Southeast is presented by RV. We have the meat. By Geico, 15 minutes can save you 15% or more on auto insurance. By Ingalls, low prices, love the savings. And by General Shale, building the American dream. Have ourselves some kind of game here, Dean Keener, with 4.04 to go in the second half. 54 all, Wofford and Mercer. A three-point battle between Spencer Collins and Justin Lewis of the Terriers and the Bears. At that time, the Bears... Phillip Leonard going to the basket. That's what he does best is finishing, and Mercer back in front. No, he does, and I was just getting ready to say interesting that both Jelks and Lewis on the bench for Mercer in an offensive possession. Obviously, Bob Hoffman knows his team very well. Probably waiting till the under four timeout as McGee can't get that one. Look at Newman knock the rebound away from Ringer, and Garcia has it. They'll get a fresh 30. 
Kind of been in a cat and mouse game where Waffle would lead by one, Mercer would lead by two, or where they would be tied. We were tied at 49, then at 54, and Mercer the two point advantage. Newman driving through traffic, and they're going to say that he was fouled. Let's see, is it on the way up? I think one official determined that it was going to be traveling. The other, out on the wing, Frankie Bordeaux, who had a better look to the open side of Newman, instead calls the foul against Mercer, and we'll have free throws coming up on the other side of this official timeout. I have a feeling we are going to see Justin Lewis of the Bears and Spencer Collins of the Terriers back on the floor for the stretch run. C.J. Newman. That's his career high with 12 points of the day. He just wants to make two free throws upcoming to get us back even. It's 56-54, Mercer. It's been big play after big play, but you're exactly right. Wofford makes 5 of 11 from behind the arc in the second half. Not to be outdone. 4 of 9 by Mercer. But in the paint, that's where Mercer has done their work. On that high pick and roll. And then Lewis and Leonard even had a couple of drives here in the last couple of minutes. They've outscored Wofford 30 to 10 in the paint in the ball game. And frankly, they're going to save this tape because that's how they want to use Desmond Ringer in every ball game. It can really open things up. Here's McGee. Haven't heard a whole lot from the freshman today. Good shooter, but he can't get that one to go. Lewis had the rebound, hits the deck, and a travel is going to be called. You know, there are a lot of bodies flying around that time. And let's see. Uh, I should say Jelks had the rebound. He hits the deck. And slow to get up. He hurt his ankle the other day, but he hasn't shown effects of it this ball game, and he's fine there. Take another look. A lot of bodies were flying around that time. Now, Jelks, I mean, he, it was as much Jelks and Leonard up there as it was Gordon, and Leonard trying to raise his arm and make the case, but I think that was the right call. And this is, we have a overtime game here at the half. They've got a tight game in Chattanooga, East Tennessee State. The first place team trails by two against Chattanooga who came into the day with Wofford and Mercer tied in the loss column for second place in the league. Gordon missed that would-be winner at the end of regulation. This time goes up over Ringer. Battle for the rebound, and it's won that time by who else but Stefan Jelks, and he continues another good ball game rebounding and double figures with 12. And that's two offensive possessions for Wofford in overtime where Garcia and Collins have, had, have not had touches. That time they feed Ringer once again on Newman, forcing it up and in. And a new career high for Desmond Ringer. South Carolina transfer, grew up just outside of Atlanta, just up the road from this campus, and he now has 19 points in the ballgame earlier this season. He had 18 in their loss at Ohio State. I've been really impressed with his, with his footwork here this afternoon inside. And now for Wofford, they've got to get Collins or Garcia a, a, a good, clean look. Collins going to load one up from three. Can't get that one to go. He had been hot, and in the ballgame, now has hit seven out of 12 three-pointers. Had 11 lead changes in the ball game. Leonard on the wing. Jelks going to try another three. Newman came out to defend. Battle for the rebound. Jelks and McGee and out of bounds to Wofford. And when you know it, Jelks was the one who took the shot, and he's the one who tapped it out of bounds. I mean, we're, you know, we're 42, 43 minutes into a, a game, and he has still got as much energy as anybody. You know, there are a lot of great athletes on the floor in all these games we do, but you look at Jelks and you see where a guy like that could be effective in a lot of other sports. You know, you could see him as a football player and, and doing some other things athletically as well. He has and got a really great first step, and that's really a key. Here's Collins going to try another three, and he's got it. And Spencer Collins, a 30-point game. He already was among the superlatives, among best scoring games in the league so far. With the effort he had against Samford two Saturdays or last Saturday when he had 25 points. And that time, he puts Wofford back in front. And that wasn't an easy shot. He had to quickly square his shoulders. Leonard with Garcia in front of him. You talk about being in the zone. What is it? We don't have enough time to talk about it right now. But Spencer Collins is there, and the confidence is extremely high. Three on the shot clock. Garcia knocked it out of bounds, trying for the loose ball and a fresh 30 for Mercer. It's amazing. You know, 228 to go in overtime just has a different feel than 228 left in regulation. Yeah, it really does. And how many times, you know, rarely... Do you see games that end up in just one overtime, especially in conference play, because the teams know so much about each other. And a turnover that time by Ringer. But really, yeah, non-league, they went to Arkansas, probably should have won it in regulation, then they took care of it in overtime. But non-league, you will see. And then now they've stopped play because one of our officials has asked for a reset of the clock. 
I think, but you'll I think often it, see uh, conference games when they go overtime usually go more than one because again these teams they not only studied for each other but Wofford and Mercer have seen each other against fellow SoCon opponents repeatedly now uh, for the past couple of weeks as they look at the film. You're, you're 100 percent right and and even though Mercer just been in the league two years I mean they're as prepared as anybody in oh, the yeah. film study they do and the scouting yeah. reports. Yep. Yeah, Mike Young has gotten some national notoriety for the four NCAA trips in the past six years. With that 2014 NCAA win against Duke, Bob Hoffman of Mercer got a whole lot of notoriety. But, you know, folks around the nation should learn even more about these two veteran coaches and how good they are. Well, they, the, they, they have as many power five or big wins as you can as you see Garcia trying to run off a Newman screen and Leonard holding him up in there. And that'll be the fourth on Leonard. Initially, the, the clock issue they had, actually it was the shot clock when Wofford inbounded, and they wanted it from 30 down to 28, and now Garcia having to wait for his teammate, Fletcher McGee. He's being attended to by the athletic trainer. I think might have put a bandage on a uh, potential cut. So Garcia goes to the line, came in at 77%. And in our ball game this afternoon, he's two out of two. He has matched his career high in scoring with that was 19 points, seven out of nine from the field. And look at that, almost uh, on his way to a double-double in the best category of all for a point guard and who has now exceeded his career high, a 20-point game for him. Well, and when you're feeding a guy like Spencer Collins, it, it's easier to accumulate those kind of assists, but that to, to, to be at nine and almost 10 assists, that's, uh, that's a heck of a statement. And Garcia, two out of two. So Wofford a three-point lead. They led by two points in the late stages of regulation when Ringer forced overtime. Obviously, you will keep an eye on the shooters, although Justin Lewis, who's been the hottest, is not on the floor right now for Mercer. Strawberry, though, a guy they defend on the wing. That's McGee right in front of him. Leonard, a better penetrator than he is a shooter from the outside, although he did make a three early in the game. Rivers, the 6'8 guard, spinning on Collins. Strawberry pump fake around McGee, forcing a three. That won't go, but look at Jumps with another rebound. He's got 13 in the game. And, and Strawberry recognized the shot clock was at three. He had to force it up. Thankfully, Jelks right there to corral it, give him another opportunity. Bob Hoffman maybe wishing he had the option to go to Lewis right now. Bennett Wofford for digging in defensively here for almost a full minute. Leonard forcing one over Garcia, who did everything he could defensively. Give Leonard credit. Great play by the senior from Tulsa, Oklahoma. One-point game coming up on a minute to go. Leonard, the player in the most foul trouble right now for Mercer with four. Lewis over there on the bench. And he sits over there with three fouls, and he is sitting at the scorer's table waiting to come back in. Try to run Collins here off of a single double. Collins catches, shoots, no good. Late in the game, that's a tough one to make trying to run off the screen. So one-point game. And you see the shot clock to game clock differential. Leonard that time looked low for Ringer, but Newman had him covered up. You know that Mike Young's been admonishing C.J. Newman, get in front of Ringer at all times. Once again, they tried to find him on the cut. Shot clock coming up on 10. This is not how Mercer necessarily likes to play, and Wofford's forced him into it all day long. Now Ringer going to try to do it himself over Newman. And a lead for Mercer. 15 seconds to go, 70 to 69. Mike Young wants him to bring it to midcourt. He'll use a timeout. 13 lead changes in the ball game. Well, I thought he was going to use a timeout, but no, play continues. Eight seconds to go. Wofford has to score to win it. Collins fires for three. No good. Jumps the rebound, and that's going to do it. And in overtime, the Mercer Bears survive. It would have been poetic. Spencer Collins, such a great day beyond the arc. But one final try for the senior guard is no good. And the Mercer Bears win an epic SOCOM battle on an early Saturday. Well, and you see great respect by these two coaches hugging at half court. And both teams here with great sportsmanship. You know, you feel for Spencer Collins. He wasn't going to give it up, nor should he. When you're having the kind of game or the kind of game that day that he's had, 8 of 14 up and uh, behind the arc. It's just, just an absolutely terrific basketball game in front of a great crowd.
So Mercer with the win gets to 14 and 4 overall. They're now 4 and 1 in the SoCon. Wofford falls to 7 and 11, and they are 4 and 2 in league play. A series that last year in the two regular season games that Wofford won were decided by a combined seven points. Well, here in Macon, Georgia today, a one-point overtime win for Mercer. These two teams get together again on February 11th in Spartanburg, and they should have a packed house at Ben Johnson Arena for that one, because it's going to be quite a show, to say the least. What a ball game we had today, Dean. I'll tell you, it was a heavyweight battle through and through. It, it was. The players well coached, well prepared. You saw big play after big play once we got going in the second half. You know, nothing but admiration for both Brugger's my guess is we may see these teams not only again in, in Spartanburg, we may see him again a third time in Asheville. And that could be for all the marbles in the SOCOM. What added to the electricity, a packed house here at Hawkins Arena. Standing room only crowd witnessing Mercer's victory in overtime against Wofford, 70-69. to For Dean Keener, Pete Hannity saying so long from Macon, Georgia.